Welcome to my sewing room. The theme for the show today is applique hems and edges. And actually, I really like my new vest with its leaves, which are applique right in the middle. See, it makes kind of an outline shape, and I really like that. Here is our first jacket to share with you today. Absolutely elegant applique. You see, this is freestanding applique, and the applique over here is uh, applique hems and edges, and then some regular applique, and then moving on into some very interesting ideas. This is another fabulous ladies jacket, also featuring interesting applique. Applique down the front, and then going over to the side, a little bit of couching too. Let me turn it around that you see the back, which is also very beautiful. The applique and the couching also goes down the back. Now, applique hems are really one of my very favorite things. This skirt has an applique hem. You see how it has scallops on the bottom and all kinds of interesting shapes to the bottom? I think that's really interesting. One of my all-time favorite applique hems is what I call the Christmas skirt. Christmas packages on the bottom of a skirt, and they have it goes up and down, up and down a little bit, and then here's another little jigged jagged. I really think that is an elegant way to wear a Christmas outfit. You know, I can remember when I was a little girl, my mother used to make me a Christmas skirt every year, and those really do make special memories. Now, let me just share with you how easy it is to make fancy applique. Come with me over to the technique boards. Applique is really very easy. Come on with me and I'll share with you how. First of all, I'm going to make some really thick stabilizer. So I have, oh, anywhere from four to eight layers of water-soluble stabilizer pressed together. That makes a really nice thick one. Trace your patterns, like the leaf patterns on the vest I have on, onto one under, onto the wrong side, not the side with the glue. Then with the wrong side of your, and by the way, then cut out your pattern. The, press it to the wrong side of your fabric and then come in and cut away around your applique design. All right, now then, the way you get this wonder under off, it's easier if you come in here and make a little slit like that and then it makes it easier to peel it off. Otherwise, you may have to sit around here just like I'm doing right now and peel all day, but that makes it a lot easier. The next step is to come in and draw the hemline on your skirt. After the hemline is drawn and you've pulled the back off your, your wonder under off your leaves, then you come in here and you press it down right along the hemline, placing it where you want it to be. Now then put one layer of water-soluble stabilizer underneath, and it's now time to zigzag, just a tiny zigzag, around the bottom one first. In other words, you work inside to outside, and then zigzag around the two leaves which go on the bottom of this leaf. All right, now is, and then cut it away. I forgot to tell you that. Go ahead and trim it away all the way around. See, you've got the leaves now on the bottom. Okay, now is the time to come in here and put your heavier stabilizer underneath it because now we're going to do a big heavy row of applique or zigzag around the leaf. We'll come over here, do one around this leaf that's also on the bottom, and then the final row of zigzagging will be around the middle leaf. Now, if you're going to the area of the skirt that you do not have a leaf on, do, do your leaf, and this is the straight part, then while your wonder, oh, excuse me, while your water soluble stabilizer is still on there, after you trim it away, just come back and zigzag around it. And this is your finished skirt, how beautiful it will be when it is all finished. Now, there's another type of applique that's easy and fun to do also. It's called freestanding applique. All right, let's do a butterfly. Trace your butterfly off on your fabric. Then, if you cannot see through the fabric to trace your design, just put your design on some water-soluble stabilizer, and now you can see through it to work. After you get your design traced, come in and put a little batting underneath it. If you would like a little puffy butterfly, which I think is pretty, do your machine embroidery in the middle. Then it's time to start your final uh, freestanding embroidery. You will put another piece of fabric behind, a piece of fabric, fashion fabric on top, one layer of water-soluble stabilizer behind, and another layer of water-soluble stabilizer on top. Then come in with all of those layers, it's kind of like a sandwich, zigzag around it, trim it away, one more layer of water-soluble stabilizer, zigzag around it, 
And looky here, that final row comes around the outside of the butterfly, and then you finish it up and just zigzag it, or in this case, a little, the little butterfly part is zigzagged down, and your little leaves are freestanding. Now come on over here and let's review that one more time and just do a simple zigzag. That's really what applique is. Please try to use the colors of thread of your actual appliques, the colors of the leaves. Trace your design on your wonder under, cut it out. Press it to the wrong side of your fashion fabric, cut it out. Then tear off your wonder under and now you're ready to, after you've drawn your line, you're ready to press it down because the glue side after you tear it off is now available. All right, here I've glued it all down here, except I really didn't glue it, I just pressed it down. And then I put my water soluble stabilizer underneath it. I do my heavy applique, and then I trim it away, and on the part that does not have the little part that sticks down, I simply do a straight applique. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of the applique for you now. I'm using a green so you can see it, but normally I would use a yellow. Now I have a width that is wide enough to go over the edge and off onto, be sure that you stitch off onto the water soluble stabilizer. You've absolutely got to get off the edge of your, of your design. Now I'm doing a really tight um, satin stitch here. And all I'm doing, this is my final step after I've already trimmed it, but I still leave that water soluble stabilizer underneath it. I'm simply going around the curve and this is going to be so cute. It's leaves like I have on my vest, and I really do like my vest. And the leaves are going to go on the outside. My water soluble stabilizer is still under here with me, and I'm using an open toe applique foot, which is really the easiest to see because it has this nice big hole in the middle. And that is all there is to doing applique. Applique on the hem and free motion, a freestanding applique. And now I have another really interesting vest with some neat techniques to share with you. I really like my vest with the freestanding applique. The freestanding applique is just so much fun to make and I just really think it looks really cute too with all the little leaves sticking up. Well, some of it's applique down. Now then, let me share with you how easy these are to make, even though they look really complicated. First of all, trace your design onto your fabric that's going to be on the top. So I have a flower, and that's going to be the center of my flower. Next, come in, and on the out, working background to foreground, on the outside, zigzag all the way around it, and then trim through both layers. As you can see, I now have the big part of the flower. It is now time to make the little inside piece. So I'm going to make the little inside piece that will be purple right here, and I have to add a little green stem to it. And then after I zigzag around that, I will trim it all away and then zigzag once again. Now these funny looking little leaves that curl around is nothing in the world but regular velveteen. Now when you zigzag around that cotton velveteen, it is going to begin to look a little like a lettuce leaf because it's going to stretch and curl. That's exactly what you want it to do is stretch and curl. The little flower, which I love to use a little flower in nearly everything, you can make two ways. This is actually a, a square piece of fabric folded in half, folded down, folded down. You can do two things. Either run gathering threads along there and gather it up, or to, the easy way would be to fold it again, fold it again, fold it again, and fold it again. And see, we've got a nice little rosebud there. Wrap this green ribbon around the little rosebud, and there you have a little, uh, you've got a little bud. Now let me show you one more time our little fishing wire here. I'm gonna make those little things, little strings that hang down and embellish, so I'll use my little spinster. Oh, this is so much fun. As soon as I get it tight, I will come up here and hold it, let it twirl around itself, pull it out, and I have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful, trim just to let hang or else to couch down. And next we have a silk ribbon embroidery, New Zealand style for you. Mm -hmm. 
I am so pleased to have as my guest today Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has authored the book Colonial Inspirations and is a very regular contributor to So Beautiful and Fancy Work magazines. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Today I'm going to show your viewers this lovely wound rose here, which you don't see very often, and also this lovely foxglove that's here at the background. It also appears on these two pockets that we have inside. Now, I'm going to do the foxglove first, and this is one that I like to do upside down. For some reason, I seem to get a better balance. Very simple, start with a straight stitch done in an embroidery floss, put a couple of French knots on the top, and then work these split stitches at a random way coming down until you get the length you want, and then some green split stitches at the bottom. So here we go. First of all, put in this long straight stem. Then you will see that I have already put a couple of French knots here. Now I'm going to lie this ribbon on the ground and I'm going to put my needle through. Now when you pull it through, don't pull it through right the way, in the way that you would for a normal split stitch. You're going to leave a little roll on the bottom there which helps to produce that bell effect that you get on a foxglove. So there we are, and we're going to continue just going on down in a random fashion like this. And as we get a little lower, then we will start to make the stitches a little wider. And you can see, when you look at this sample that I have here, how I have just continued to go on down and then put these around there. Now I would like to show you this lovely wound rose. It's very simple. First of all, bring your thread through, then take a piece of ordinary machine cotton and stitch it down at the back like this, first of all, so it's nice and secure. Now turn it over and you're ready to go. You will see here, I've got my pin in. Don't be tempted to take too big a bite. Now I'm going to wind a figure eight around like that, fairly firmly, and then I will slide the ribbon underneath, letting it take a little twist as it goes. Now to keep it round, you have to wind this underneath, just slide it underneath there. Otherwise, you're inclined to get a very oval rose, and we don't want oval roses, do we? It's a bit like square roses. <laughs> I don't think they've invented them yet. So we keep on going like that until we have the size and the shape that we want. And then just put your needle in like that and pull it through to the back. Now this is where this needle, which we have the machine thread, comes in. We're going to take it and we're now going to come up and we're going to stitch very carefully in the folds so that we can't see them, but we're going to hold those folds down into position, taking great care to get those ones that are there where the pin is, like this. And I like to try to work in a fairly methodical fashion because otherwise it's very easy to miss. And when you have got all of those securely in place, then you get to the point where like this. And here's the moment you wait for. Take the pin out, <laughs> and if you haven't secured them all, then you will find it just pops up. So I like to, I don't finish off this thread, which I've taken to the back, until I've taken out that pin, because I might have to do a very quick little stitch to just catch it before it runs away on me. A very simple rose, but also a very lovely one. This is such a pretty stitch it over here. It is a pretty terribly. stitch, isn't what it? What did you do there? <laughs> now, Martha, you will remember that Margaret Boyles was showing us this lovely feather stitch, and uh -huh. she did it beautifully. 
but I like to torture it a little bit because you can do fun things with it. And you will see both here and on the front here, I have used a branch and this is hit hit here, just going out there. And it's really very, very simple. Instead of being neat and tidy as you are there, just take a little stitch like this and make it do what you want. If you want a long branch, then obviously you'll take a, a long stitch. If you want just a short one, then you will take it and you can just make it bend, which is really lovely when you want to use it in something which is like we have on the front of our hussif here. But a very, very pretty filler. It's really lovely. Oh, Beverly, thank you so very much. And next, I have a home decorating item for you. Once again, I have the privilege of using a beautiful antique pillow and changing it into something that you can do very easily today. All right, here are the little motifs on this antique pillow. And by the way, the pillow is done. Let me slip my hand on here so you can see. This is netting uh, over a little pink satin pillow. Now here is our reproduction for you using the motifs turned in sort of a butterfly shape here and the motifs turned to make a circle here. And then the little motifs are just stitched all the way around the edge. They're simply zigzagged to that pretty black braid. These particular motifs are from Switzerland, however they're available in a lot of fabric stores made in the USA. Now, to, in order to make the little butterfly motif, I put two of them together and a piece of water-soluble stabilizer underneath it. And now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to zig and zag. Of course, I'm going to take the pins out. I don't think our sewing machine manufacturers recommend sewing over pins, not even one of them. So always be sure you take your pins out. And I'm simply going to zigzag them together and then I'm going to cut away or rinse away my water soluble stabilizer. And then I have my motif ready. I'll put it in a circle to make a circular motif. Now here comes the fun. Arranging it on the netting exactly the way I want them to be. And then I will finish it up by sewing them just down to the netting piece. And the little motifs that went around the edge, those are kind of easy to do too. Around the edge of the pillow, after I have stitched on this really good looking purchase braid, I will simply butt together a motif and zigzag it to the braid. Now that is really not hard to do. Let me just go ahead and underneath here, let's just go ahead and butt it up right to the braid, except the braid will be on the edge of the pillow when you do this. We're going to butt it up to the braid and lower the presser foot and simply zigzag. Once the pillow is all finished, simply go in here and zigzag the motif to the braid. And then our little pillow, our little pillow is finished. And you see this was nothing in the world but just zigzagging. And then after the whole thing is finished, then you can come back in and, and this cute little Victorian looking uh, button with the black background and the pink rose on the front. That's just a nice little addition. And next I have one of the, my most favorite crafts that we have ever done on Martha's Sewing Room to share with you. I love this craft, and those of you that love babies and or dolls, I think will love it also. This is just a beautiful shadow box filled with fun and easy things to do, and actually you can hot glue gun the whole thing if you want to. This wonderful little baby is on a pretty blanket, all made out of French and English laces, and a little baby doll that you simply buy the pieces at the craft store. The background is a purchased wrapping paper, all kinds of sweet things, such as a little handmade book, that we made, now you don't have to buy that, you can make it beading with ribbon run through it, a little picture frame here that has a lock of the baby's hair, and a teeny little baby bonnet right up there in the corner. This, this little baby bracelet, you can buy those little letters at a craft store too, and the little booty. And here's a little purchase picture shaped into an oval, or you could use a real picture too. And then a little glass teddy bear. What a sweet project to make for yourself or to give as a present. All right, 
very simple to make the doll. You start with a little craft uh, kit. that The doll head looks like this, and then there are two little arms. And you make a little pillow to glue it onto. This kind of little, you don't need to put any legs. Our legs aren't going to show. And you glue it all together. Then you just begin to wrap your goodies around. You wrap your lace around her arms here and the lace around her head for a bonnet. The skirt is really simple too. It has a piece of Swiss eyelet or just plain fabric. It doesn't have to be Swiss eyelet, which is covered by netting. And then all of that is pinched into place and glued on. The little blanket is very easy to make. It is all of the wonderful assorted goodies, lace and a little pretty backing. And then I put cotton under here just to kind of stuff it in a little bit so it would stay at the right place. Then after you smush it in a little bit where it looked like the baby is really asleep on the blanket, get her little dress out there really pretty. Then take some fabric stiffener and just spray it all over there just to make it stiff as can be and then it will stay where you want it to stay. Or you could sew it a little bit also. Now after you get the background finished, and by the way, the background is the uh, wrapping paper and then a little picture and the beading with the ribbons running through it. Then it's time to have the fun embellishing with little goodies, such as the little glass teddy bear. Here's the little picture that we had the hair in and all kinds of other little miniature things. Really, your choice of what to glue on it is part of the fun of making this adorable project. And now I have a very special antique garment for you in my attic. I have named this dress the smocked netting embroidered dress and it is straight out of the 1920s and what a beauty it is. The dress is made of netting and the smocking begins right up here on each shoulder with a honeycomb smocking. The absolutely magnificent uh, padded satin stitch embroidery and other embroidery too is on the bodice and I'm going down to the typically 1920s dropped waist and there is some more smocking holding in the fullness. I'd like to raise this skirt up so you can really see the magnificent embroidery that is on the skirt with the padded satin stitch, the filtre and then the uh, beautiful scallops on the bottom and then just some more uh, pretty embroidery, just a magnificent piece of embroidery. For my Sewing for the Heart today, Sewing from the Heart, I have a wonderful letter from Lois Richards of Elwood City, Pennsylvania. Lois writes, Dear Martha, I have traveled in the past two years with the John Guest evangelistic team to Albania and Ukraine. On each trip, I have taken smocked baby bonnets and give them to give to the children there. These babies were patients at the hospital. Although we were there in September, it was quite cold and the heat is not available until November 1st. I put their bonnets on right over the wool stockinette caps they were wearing. I carried one in my purse always and gave them out each day as I came across a baby that I thought needed it. I am working on some now to take to Romania. I have promised the Lord that as long as I can see, I will make bonnets for his babies. I also sell a few and send the money to an orphanage in Albania. Sincerely, Lois Richards. Lois, thank you so much for sharing your unselfishness for these children a long way away. You know, it's just such an exciting thing to see how women are using their sewing machines. And of course, in the case of smocking, it can be your sewing machine or by hand, but using their talents and gifts to sew for those less fortunate and those who really need something. I've always said for those of you that love to sew for babies, but you don't have a baby in your family, don't worry. Just look two feet away and you will find babies. Babies that are in foster homes, babies that have mothers who don't know how to sew or poor babies that really don't have anything that's pretty. Believe me, there are plenty of babies around to sew for. I thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a wonderful time with your being here and I would like to invite you back for the next show. <music>